when solving multiple triangles, right? Uh, some of the things to consider, right? Um, start with the triangle start with a triangle that has more info given okay so you want to look at you're going to have two which one of the two um, am I going to start with okay it's the one that has more more information okay solve for side that is shared okay by the two triangles okay so you start with the one that has most info the most info given and then you want to see which side do they have in common right that's the one you want to solve for and then you you move on uh, from there okay um, uh, always remember you can also use um, sum of a triangle equaling 180 and uh, and Pythagorean theorem okay. so that Pythagorean theorem is basically hypotenuse squared is equal to leg squared plus leg squared so these two are always um, available to us if we need to, because the more you solve, the more you're gonna know, and then you can and then you can dive into these ones if you'd like. Okay, uh, and so that that is always available to you. Okay? If anybody uh, joined, uh, I think it was Jan and Angie. Let me know if you're there. Okay, so let's start with just solving a triangle in the first place. When we say solving a triangle, it means solving all sides, all angles. Okay. Solving a triangle, determine. all sides and all angles okay so if you think about it a triangle has three sides three angles so most likely right you will generally okay good angie you're generally given three pieces of information to begin with. Okay. You will generally uh, be given three pieces of info. Okay. Need to solve for the remaining three, okay? So if you have triangle A, B, C, right? You're also gonna have sides A, B, and C like that. So there's angle, 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 right? So there will be three angles and three sides. And so you need to know all of those six uh, when it's saying solving, right? Solving a triangle is very important here. So when a question asks for that, 
it really doesn't matter what you solve for first as long as you end up answering the question what are all three angles and all three sides now we're dealing with right triangles correct so you know that one of these angles is going to be a 90 degree angle maybe not right off the bat but if you cut it you might have to cut a triangle uh, to create a right triangle but one of these will be 90 right so you'll know the 90 here most likely and then they'll have to give you at least one more side to get you started and so we'll we'll uh, go over some examples here okay example so let's try with this let's give this triangle a try here like that the 90s up top we're gonna go X Y and Z now your teachers next year might have a specific way of labeling they might tell you we always label clockwise right it really doesn't matter though it, it ends up being the same because as your angles are, are, are labeled differently, so will the sides across from them, but they stay together, really. So we have that. We know that that's our 90. And we are given that this is 35 here. Okay. We're given that that's 35. So let's go ahead and solve for all sides and all angles. Let's do a little bit of the inventory that I just started with here, just so we know, okay? So we have X, angle X, angle Y, and angle Z. And we have side X, side Y, side Z over here. So what do we already know? We know that Z is equal to 90 degrees we know that angle x is equal to 35 degrees and we know that side x right uh, maybe let's label that using i'm going to use a red pen here right this is side x across from angle y you have side y here and this is side z here so we know that we know side X is 17.5 inches. And as you can tell, you have three pieces of information. We're going to have to find the other three. Okay. Um, maybe, in my opinion, the easiest one to find here would be to figure out what Y is, right? Angle Y is equal to 180 minus the 90 degree angle that you have right minus the 35. in reality you can actually always just go right like ignore that right triangle which we know is 90 so we we know that the two acute angles will add up to 90 as well so just go 90 minus the other acute to give you that third angle so we don't have to include that one but if you do want to deal with all three, then it's got to be 180 minus 90 minus the 35. So that gives us angle Y is equal to 55 degrees. So you figured out angle Y. So we kind of boxed that in. And we can go over here and say this is 55 degrees right there using a different color because those are the ones I'm solving for okay so done I have all my angles now I can continue um, I'm gonna have to use Sokotoa to get me one more side okay notice that you cannot use Pythagorean theorem as it stands because you need at least two sides okay so let's label our triangle as always across from x this is the given angle right so across from x this is called the opposite 
um, this is my hypotenuse. And you're like, Mr. Dixon, so which one is my don't know, don't care in this case? Listen carefully, okay? Because technically they care about both of them. Okay? What you kind of have to just determine to get you started, which one is the don't know, don't care side right now? So you can choose to say, well, I'm going to not care about Z. And I'm just going to go with Y now, side Y. Or you're going to cover up that one and just say, you know what, I'm just going to care about Z right now. You kind of have to make that call. Either way, you should get the same answer. You should get, ultimately, your final conclusion here for Y and Z will be the same. Okay? Let's just label them all. This is the hypotenuse. And this is the adjacent. Okay, so solving for, I'm going to go for Z, side Y is don't know, don't care for now, okay, side Y is my don't know, don't care, if you want to solve for Z, then side Y is the don't know, don't care. Right, so so ka toa. And since I'm only involving opposite and hypotenuse in this particular case, right, this is the one I'm using. So this goes, okay? So let's uh, use sign here to get us started. Got to move my notes here a bit. Okay, so that means that I have to use sine of 35 degrees is equal to, right, opposite is 17.5 over hypotenuse, which is Z. Very important to put them in the right place. Multiply both sides by Z. Cancel them out here. And then it's Z sine of 35 equal to 17.5 divide both sides by sine of 35 um, I'm gonna have to calculate this because I don't sine of 17.5 divided by sine of 35 that gives me 30.51 And that is, we are in inches. Okay. So I'm going to put the steps. Step number one, step number two, right? Step number three, solve for Y. Now, you can choose to use Sokatoa can use or Pythagorean theorem because now you have two sides let's go over here and, and put this down this is 30.51 inches um, now that you have two sides you can use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for y so um, Let's do it both ways. If you solve for Y, then Z is, is the don't know, don't care. So if you have to choose between Sogatoa, sorry, I'm not going to rewrite it again because it gets a little repetitive. If Z is the don't know, don't care, then it's basically look at up here on the triangle you cover that up you almost go back to the drawing board now you're saying well it's an opposite and adjacent the two sides that i'm involving here opposite and adjacent is tangent right so tangent of 35 degrees is going to be equal to opposite over adjacent like that you multiply both sides by y. OK. 
cancel out the y's. You end up with y tan of 35 is equal to 17.5. Divide both sides by tan of 35. This cancels out here. So it's 17.5 divided by tan of 35, and that's 24.99 inches. So I used I used uh, the trig ratios. Okay, so katoa are called the trig ratios to solve for both sides. But what if I had using Pythagorean theorem? What if I had used Pythagorean theorem? Right. Well, then we would have had to go z squared. The uh, the hypotenuse squared is equal to Oh, sorry, yeah, z squared is equal to x squared plus y squared, right? The Pythagorean theorem states that the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the legs, okay? So we know z already, 30.51 squared. We know what x is, 17.5 squared. So now we just need to figure out what y is. So here you have to use your algebra skills, right? I'm going to be very tight in terms of space here. 17.5 comes over subtracting. I'm not squaring just yet, okay? Leaving me with y squared all on its own, okay? And my last step will be that y is equal to square root of 30.51 squared minus 17.5 squared. And you're like, why? Why didn't you figure out what that was? I, I find it easier like that because, and I'm just gonna go over here, y is equal to um, just subtracting the squares. So look at my calculator here, 30.51 squared minus 17.5 squared. I get that number, and then I'll just take the square root of that, and that's 24.99. So either way works out, right? Either way still gives me the desired side. So whether you use Pythagorean theorem or you use trig twice, that's fine. So just remember, you need to decide which one is your don't know, don't care, right? So if you're trying to solve for Z first, then Y is the don't know, don't care. If you're trying to solve for Y first, then Z is your don't know, don't care, right? Because you need to kind of see which two sides are involved here to pick the right trig ratio. So this is solving a triangle. Okay, this is just one triangle but it's the same idea. And I will I will make a little note on the side here or wherever you have room, no, notation. Sometimes a textbook will refer to, I'm gonna go up to my original side Z, can also be referred to, look at my pencil here, Right, side Z can also be referred to side X, Y, or as side Y, X, right? So you need to know that. Side Z is also equal to X, Y. Sometimes they have a little bar on top like that. Side Y is equal to X, Z. And side X is equal to z y and the order doesn't really matter but i would i always tend to go single letter notation like i even if the if they ask me for side x y i'm gonna say i'm just gonna label it on the triangle and say well i'm gonna try to find side z okay it just makes it easier like that okay
So I need you to just, just like uh, all the other units, everything is connected. You could have first solved for y, right? And then use Pythagorean theorem to solve for z, for example. Use trig for to solve for y, and then use Pythagorean to to solve for z, right? Like it's not it's not like just it is, it's just one way of doing it. As long as you're consistent, uh, it will work out for you. I just warn you on rounding early. Don't round early, right? Like if you're finding these squares and you subtract them, you use all decimals as they go into the square root. Continue here. So there we go. Let's try a multiple triangle situation here. Okay. Example. So we're going to start here. One side is going to be a bit longer than the other. Okay, so make one side longer than the other. And we're gonna slice this one here. And we have A, B, C. And we have a D here. We know that this angle is 26 degrees and this side measures 22.9 centimeters. Mm -hmm. And this angle over here measures 49 degrees. So that's all the info that we're given, okay? And so we'll say it, it's going to ask us to uh, determine BC, okay? That's basically going to be our objective here, to find side BC. All right, so um, you basically have two triangles, right? Um, and I will put a little number in there. This is triangle one, and we care about the right triangles, okay? I know that they're, technically you're seeing three. You see the big one here, on the outside, right? And then you see two on the inside. Those are the ones we care about. Those are the ones we can work with. Okay, so they're asking us to determine this. So what you can do is I'm going to use a different color. I'm going to call side BC. I'm going to call that X. Okay, because you're technically labeling it, and you're telling me that's that's what I'm trying to find. But you need to start with one of these triangles. Which one has the most information? This one here only has the 49 that are cute. And of course, these two side by side are both 90, right? It's to be understood that if this is 90, this is also 90. But you need at least one side to get you started. So we need to, we need to start with this triangle and then move over to this side. They share okay, that side. I'm going to highlight that. This is the side that both of these small triangles share. So I'm going to call that Y because it's going to be important to get me to X, right? 
So I will say this. Start with triangle. We call this one A, B, D. Or triangle number one, right? So we're going to start with triangle number one. Solve for as uh, for BD, right? We're going to solve for BD, which is Y. Shared side. So we're going to start with our first triangle. Then we're going to solve for side BD. And the reason why I'm doing that is because next year you may have, you know, depending on how your teacher operates, you need to be comfortable with either notation right some teachers might just keep it at bd not even label it as a single letter right and so uh, just be careful with that also why didn't i call this one lowercase a why did i go x and y well because from this angle right this would be side a but if you're going from this angle right here, that should be side C. And so it gets confusing. What right? is it, A or C, right? Well, we're referring to the same side. So then that's when I use X, Y, and Z. I use those letters instead if I have multiple triangles. So let's start with this one. So we're going to start in triangle one. Based on that triangle, I have right um i have to be careful here how i'm doing this so i'm going to cut this out okay. cut it out quickly just make a sketch so this is 26 okay this is 22.9 doesn't take that long and then at least you know what to do okay so based on this angle that's given this is my opposite side and this is the hypotenuse this is my, I don't know what it is and I don't care either, okay? So based on that, I'm gonna use so, right? So sine of 26 degrees is equal to order matters opposite over 22.9. I multiply both sides by 22.9. This cancels out. Y is already on its own isolated, so we can just uh, go ahead and multiply 22.9 times sine of 26. And that's 10.0. You are tempted to go 0, 04, correct? But we're going to use this side to continue onto our second triangle. So we don't really want to round to two decimals. Double. We're going to double the decimals we need at, for our final answer. So we're going to use 10.030387 because this 9, which is the fifth number, bumps that up to a 7. Centimeters. Okay. Round to four decimals. If you don't, then you you will be, uh, usually you don't get the same answer. So we, we consider it rounding too soon or too early, okay? Especially if you're going to use that to carry on for your next uh, side length, right? So this, we're going to underline that. It's not our final answer, but it's definitely important to us, okay? In the second triangle, right? We have this scenario now. We know that this is 49. Okay, we know that this is 10.0387. Okay, and we want this side right here. That X is there. This is the one we just solved, right? So we kind of make an arrow indicating that. And so now we label based on this angle, and this is the opposite still, just happens to be the case, and this is the hypotenuse. 
Okay, don't think that it's always, they're always going to be called the same. Right, in this case, they're both the opposite, but it could have been that they give you this angle up here, in which case this would have been the adjacent for this triangle over here. So you have to be very careful, label the way I've taught it, right? So we use so again. And so we have sine of 49 degrees. Oh, it's gonna it's gonna bleed into that other work. I don't want that, so I'm gonna just go underneath it. Sine of 49 degrees is equal to 10.0387, right? Over my hypotenuse, which is in, in this case it's unknown. So the the variable is in the denominator, right? Makes it a little bit more challenging. So we're going to multiply both sides by whatever is in the denominator, which is x, okay? So we end up with x sine of 49. Just show your work, okay? Don't be scared of spending a couple extra seconds showing your work. And then if you divide both sides by sine of 49, This cancels out and so you can actually just type that in and get your answer so we're not solving the triangle here this is just a multiple triangle situation where you have to go ahead and do that so you end up with 13.30 centimeters this is your final answer this is side B, C, okay? So again, don't be too fixated with, oh, it was sign both times, right? Um, don't do that, okay? Because this could have been a, a very different uh, situation uh, where you may have had to use sine first, then tangent on the second one, or tangent first and then cosine on the second one. Like the it, the way this will show up and appear will vary greatly, okay? So we're gonna we're gonna do another one. So let's do another example here and I will say determine side C D okay so you're gonna have to be very careful to not skip steps okay because if you want full marks you're gonna have to show the steps that you take from one to the other right so uh, ready for the diagram so I'm going to start you off with just a right triangle like this. Okay. So start with that. And then from there, go to the top corner. We're not going to go straight sideways. We're kind of going to go up in an angle like this. And then you connect that end to this bottom part here. And believe it or not, this is going to be a right triangle here. I know it won't look like it, but this is our right. We're told by the diagram that that's our right angle up there. So we go A, B, C, D. Those are the vertices, okay? The corners. So there are two right triangles, and it's kind of weird, but where the right angles are. And so what we're given is that this angle here is 47 degrees. 
Okay. And we're given that this is 26 degrees. This side down here is 4.2 centimeters. And so that's all we are given. Before we solve, I will just mention something here that just came to mind now. It's called the three letter angle notation, which some students mix up with, it's a triangle notation, it's not. But you cannot say, hey, I'm so, uh, angle D is 26. You cannot say that. Why not? Because angle D, is this whole thing in this corner. Angle D is actually comprised of this angle and this angle here. So there are two angles formed at that point, D. So notation here. I just need you to be prepared for that if you if that appears next year, even, even here in the homework, right? Notation, angle, You, what we do is we have basically we have the three letter notation so D will be in the middle and then you can either go C D B or B D C okay it's equal to 26 degrees so if you if I had given you hey look at this triangle and then say and I tell you that angle BDC is 26. Focus on D as being the middle, right? And then just see which ones are connected. Oh, see, okay, it's B, D, C. Just read it out the way it is. B, D, C. So it's this angle that they're referring to. Okay. Um, and angle, if we wanted to refer to this one right here, this 47 degree, we could go angle A, B, D. At which point, if, if I were given a three-letter angle notation, uh, I would just right go ahead and label that into this triangle right away and then not have to use them anymore. Okay? Three-letter angle notation. And just remember, it's the, it's the middle, right, right, where both of these points combine right so that's kind of where you want to focus on it's like okay d is right here which one is it is it this one or is it this one well in this case it's that one i just read the letters right b d c b d c so that's the angle form if i was referring to this one here i would go a d b if somebody said angle a d b then i'm referring to that sliver there so just I just want you to know, right, that you're not surprised by any, any notation. That shouldn't, I don't want the notation to be the reason for you not being able to do it. Okay, that's all I'm trying to say here. I, one last thing, I know I'm, I'm going on about angles. Some of you are like, I get it already, right? Can you just say angle A here? Absolutely, because that's the only angle possible at that point corner at this point you can say angle C here no problem right because there's only one angle formed can you say angle B no you're in trouble because there's there are two components to angle B so you would have to use a three-letter notation to accurately tell me which one of these two are you giving me so if you are given a diagram and the three-letter notation like that, you, it's just your job to go ahead and, and put it in the right spot in your diagram, okay? Most of the time, it will be already in there, but just in case, you should be able to find its location. All right, enough of that. Um, I have two triangles. They share a side. I'm going to highlight the shared side. 
because you need to focus on that. Um, which one am I, am I going to start with? Which triangle? I'm going to start with triangle ABD, right? So this triangle over here, because I have more the most information given. So this is my first triangle, and then I'm going to go over to the second triangle. I'm supposed to solve for side CD, which I'm going to call I'm going to call that lowercase x, and the one they share I'm going to I'm going to call that y. It's just the way I choose to do it. If you want two different letters, go for it. And so there you have it, okay? So in one, start with triangle. Uh, you can start anywhere, A, B, D, right? Which is my first triangle. And based on that, it probably will take 10 extra seconds to make this, right? 47 is up here y is here and 4.2 is given there so you're just making a very simplified sketch so based on this angle given to me that's my reference angle this is the opposite and this is the hypotenuse again right oh so i have to use so right just to help me out because it's o and h that is left right so sine of 47 is equal to 4.2 over y. Very important to have the order correct. Remember that, please. It's like the negative issue, right? Like, don't forget double negatives. Y multiply both sides, both sides times y. Why? Because of this. Okay, and then you end up with y. Sine of 47, 4.2. You divide both sides by sine of 47. Cancel y is equal to 4.2 divided by sine of 47. And that's 5.7428. You're not done yet, right? So don't round too early. Don't round too soon, okay? And then we're gonna carry this into our second triangle. And the second triangle, I'm just gonna try my best here. I know my 90 is there, that's very important. This is X, I've called it X, this is 26 degrees. This is now known to me, so I'm just gonna call it, I'm gonna label it using the actual value. And so based on that, based on the reference angle here, this is the hypotenuse, right? This would be the opposite side, which I don't know and don't care about. So this is the adjacent. See, so I have to use adjacent hypotenuse, that's cosine, right? So I'm gonna start here, cosine of 26 degrees is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. I'm going to multiply both sides by that, by the denominator, cancel these out. This one ends up just being a one-step situation. 5.16, now you can round to two decimals. side CV okay so um, question could they have asked me for an angle in the second triangle absolutely like they could have asked you for one of the acute angles in the second triangle 
So don't think that it's not that it's not never going to be the case. It can absolutely be the case. So remember that the inverse, which is the very first thing we did, helps you to find the angles. Okay. So that is something to keep in mind. All right. I think um, I was going to do the word problems that involve two triangles, but I think you ne need to first practice this. So I'm going to assign, let me just get this right here. Yeah. So page seven, I know the page number isn't on there. Uh, but it would be, if you follow along, page, page six, seven, eight, it would be page eight. Page eight in booklet. It looks like this. Let me just uh, bring this up here on your screen. This is what the what that page looks like. No, no fancy notation or anything like that. Um, I know you're gonna run into some trouble with three and four. So we are just going to leave this for now, okay? So omit three and four. So just do one, two, five, and six. One, two, five, and six. So I will put that down. One, two, five, six. Only do those four. And uh, I want to say a little something about these triangles. Most of them are straightforward, or basically the way we've been doing them. Six will be a bit of a challenge. You just look at the notation carefully. Okay. Look at look at these boxes carefully. It'll be a bit of a challenge. So keep that in mind and there's also this one right like this is telling you that this big one here outside is a 90 okay so you're gonna have to use uh, everything that you know about a triangle Pythagorean theorem all of that for some of these to, to solve okay one and two should be straightforward exactly the way we've done it um, let me just check here what the key says for the for seven, eight, and nine. One sec. 